Good morning, guys. It's a beautiful morning here in South Carolina, and the birds are especially chirpy this morning. And I'm here for us to start our day with our daily Disney devotional. So let's see what today is. Yesterday was Seven Doors Mind Train. Today is number 16, Ariel's Undersea Adventure. Still in Fantasyland for two more attractions. Let's head over around the mine train to the back of Fantasyland and ride a fairly new ride, which is officially called The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Undersea Adventure. Okay, that name is way too long. <laughs> Don't you think? We usually just call it The Little Mermaid Ride. This ride is of course based on the 1989 classic movie of the same name. This movie is a very important one. It was the first of sort of reboot for Disney classic animated movies. Right after this movie was made, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and The Lion King came out in succession and all became hits for Disney. Before The Little Mermaid, <clears throat> there were some good movies, of course, but it had been a while since Disney had a real blockbuster movie and I've always enjoyed the movie myself. It's a great story and the show at Hollywood Studios based on the film is always fun to watch as well. More on that later. The Little Mermaid ride opened in Walt Disney World 2012 after the original opened in Disneyland 2011. They are pretty much identical to one another. I personally enjoy this ride because it's simply a journey through the film <clears throat> as most of the important scenes are shown. I've heard a few people say that it's simply is too simple or boring but to me it's a relaxing and fun i especially like the scene with ursula the audio animatronic of her is pretty impressive there are some definite fun facts about this ride the ride sit sits on the spot where another classic attraction used to be 20,000 leagues under the sea which was a submarine ride that still exists in disneyland as a nod to its former attraction, you can find an imprint of the Nautilus, the submarine from the film, in one of the massive rocks in the queue line. Also, Imagineers bottled up some of the water from the previous ride, held on to it for 18 years, and in an official ceremony, poured it into Ariel's waters when opening this Little Mermaid ride. That's so special. That's so Disney. See, that's why I love Disney. This ride, or actually the queue line, also contains one of the most creative hidden Mickeys ever. It can only be seen one day a year on Mickey's birthday, which is November 18th. On that day, if the sun is out, it's rays blasting through the rocks from the queue line to form a hidden Mickey on the rocks below. As usual, I am impressed with the attention to detail and the fact that Imagineers were able to come up with that and make it happen on Mickey's actual birthday. That's so cool. I had no idea. For today's devotional, let's get back to the story from the famous movie. The film is, of course, about Ariel wanting to become human instead of a mermaid and she is willing to give up her life under the sea and her voice to become human and meet prince eric so that leads me to my main question for today what are you willing to give up for god ariel was willing to give up a lot to make her dreams come true what about you do you have dreams and goals and aspirations I hope so. I encourage you to actually write them down, put them in a prominent place and work hard for them. At the same time, I hope your ultimate dream is to see God and to be with him one day. What are you willing to give up to do that? Is anything holding you back right now from being right with God? As I mentioned in another recent devotional, we are all human and make mistakes. We all sin and fall short of God's glory. It even says in the Bible in Romans 3:23. So, what is your sin? You know you have one or two or three. I know I do. I have things I need to work on and give up for God. 
Maybe it's not sin at all. Maybe it's something we love like money or electronics or TV or taking our, that are taking our focus off of God. When something dominates our life, whether it's sinful or not, and takes us away from time with God, that thing is not a good thing. Whatever it is, we need to give it up in order to obtain our goal. 1 John 2, 15 through 16 basically tells us not to love the world. A great and fun, as great and fun as this world is, as well as a blessing from God, we are not to love it. We are to remember that it is temporary and we need to give up the world in order to be with God one day. I hope you get a little, to enjoy the Little Mermaid ride on your next trip. It's a fun journey with fantastic scenes and great music. As you ride, remember Ariel's story and how she gave up a lot to make her dreams come true in the end. Are we willing to do the same? Matthew 16, 25 says, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. <clears throat> that was what Jesus was saying when he, uh, and he means if we are willing to give up our life here on earth, we will one day find him in heaven. So can you do that? Can you really give up your life here and all the fun things that go with it? It's so important that you do. I'm really trying hard myself to do just that, and I hope that you'll join me. That was a good one. I like that ride. We've ridden it every time that we've gone since it's been open, and it really is a journey through the movie of The Little Mermaid. My favorite scene in The Little Mermaid and my favorite song is definitely Kiss the Girl.